and welcome to our next unit, Research in Psychology. Today we're going to be talking about why we need research in psychology, why we need psychology to be a science, and what are some of the types of research that psychologists do, beginning with descriptive research. So let's go ahead and dive in. Why do we need psychology as a science? Why do we need to do research in psychology? The reason why is because psychology is a complicated science. It's based on the study of human behavior and thought processes, and it was born of philosophy. Meaning there are a lot of theories that exist about why we think and act the way that we do. But how do we know for sure? We could all come up with different theories to explain why people are acting the way that they are. But unless we actually have a way to measure and prove that our theories are correct, all we're really doing is postulating theories. We'll also fall prey to a host of cognitive biases. We all experience bias on a regular basis when we are thinking about and looking at the world. Some of the tricks that our brain plays on us cause us to fall prey to these more often than others. Some of these include things like hindsight bias or the I knew it all along phenomenon. We often hear the results of a study in psychology and we can logically explain why that makes sense. And it might lead us to believe, well, we always knew that. We knew it all along, everybody knows it. But unless we actually create a theory and test it, we could pretty much logically explain just about any theory that we hear. And so that's why it's really important that we test our theories, otherwise we will fall prey to this hindsight bias. We also might fall victim to overconfidence when we believe we know more than we actually do. That overconfidence is another reason why it's so necessary to make sure we are testing our theories to prove that we actually know what we think we do. We also experience what's known as confirmation bias, where we seek out information that only supports what we already believe. And we do this all the time in our day-to-day -day lives. Think about any divisive topic in the world today and people on both sides of that argument are going to find information that supports their belief. And we really need to reach across and look at all types of information and all types of valid research to know what is actually true or not. And then last but not least is self-fulfilling prophecy. And that is where our unconscious beliefs might actually cause an outcome to happen. If you think about it in terms of studying for an exam and you say, I am not going to do well on this exam, so why bother studying? You don't study and guess what happens? You fulfill the prophecy that you're not going to do well on the exam and you don't do well. So all of these are different issues we run into when it comes to the way that we think and how it can fail us and why we need psychology as a science. So the goals of psychology, as we learned back in our first unit, is to describe, explain or understand, predict, and ultimately modify behavior. And the research that we do in psychology can help us to meet these four goals. Different types of research are going to help us meet different goals. We have three major types of research that we're going to be looking at, descriptive research, correlational research, and experiments. Descriptive research helps us to meet the first two. Correlational will help us meet predicting. And then experiments are where we'll actually go ahead and modify behavior. Today we're going to talk about descriptive research and the three types of descriptive research that exist in the field of psychology. Descriptive research is any type of research where we are just observing and recording what we see. We're not looking for relationships. We're not looking to predict or change someone's behavior. All we're trying to do is describe. This is probably the first step in almost all types of research because before we try and predict or test our theory, we first want to collect as much information as we can in order to create a theory about human behavior. So the three types of descriptive research that we do in the field of psychology are naturalistic observations, case studies, and surveys. Naturalistic observations are exactly what they sound like. We observe people or animals in their natural habitat without the subject's knowledge. So we can go to, say, a public place and we can watch human interaction, how people behave and act 
in these natural habitats, and then we would describe and report on what we see. The idea here is to understand how people behave in natural settings. This really gives us a good idea about typical human behavior or natural human behavior. The problem is we are limited to the locations of where we can do this research. We can't go into someone's home, for example, and sit down and say, I'm here to observe the average family dinner. Don't mind me, act natural. The minute we know that somebody's watching us, chances are we're going to change our behavior. So we're really only limited to public settings where people can be observed without being consciously aware of it to where it might interfere or affect the way that they're acting. The second type of study that we might do in descriptive research are case studies. And case studies are where we look at one person's behavior in very great detail. This is typically because that individual has something unique about them, something that makes them different from the rest of the population that makes them worth studying. The cool thing about a case study is that we can go into great depth. We can interview a person, we can give them psychological tests, we can record them, we can read journal entries, we can gain a lot of information about a single individual. The problem with a case study is that it's probably not one that we're going to apply to the general population. That one person typically has something unique about them which means it's not something that we see in our everyday lives. So what we learn from that case study, while may lead to further theories about human behavior, is probably not going to be something that we're going to use to apply to everybody. And finally, we have surveys. And surveys in psychology are used in descriptive research to collect a lot of information to describe how people think and how they act. The nice thing about a survey as it can also be used in correlational studies and in experiments, as we'll talk about later. But for now, we'll just look at them in terms of how we collect information to describe general trends in the way people think and act in a society. The nice thing about surveys is that we can get a very large group of people to respond. If you've ever been asked to fill out a survey before, they're usually pretty quick, and when necessary, they can be anonymous, which means you might get people to be more honest about their responses. You can get a lot of questions and a lot of answers done in a relatively short amount of time. And you can also get a very random sample of the population so that your results are representative of the population as a whole. The problem with surveys is that oftentimes people just don't want to answer them. Think about if you have ever been, say, walking down the street and someone asks you to stop and fill out a survey. Many times we say no thank you and we keep walking by. Or maybe you get one popping up at the end of a shopping experience on a website and you close out of it. So sometimes people choose just not to answer surveys and so we might get low response rates. We also run into the problem where people might lie or misrepresent themselves on surveys. Sometimes this is because of wording effects. So the way that questions are worded are going to influence the way a person understands the question and then responds. Or it could also be because of social desirability bias. This happens particularly if the survey is not anonymous, but if you ask questions about personal behaviors, about topics such as infidelity, or cheating on exams, or whatever it may be that is something that is not socially acceptable, people may lie in order to answer it in a way that they think is more socially acceptable. And that, of course, is going to mess up our data. So there are pros and cons to using all different types of descriptive research, but this helps us to gain some additional information about individuals' behaviors and thought processes, and if we start to see a trend emerge, we might be able to take that research further to see if we can predict behavior or, in some cases, even go so far as to modify. The last thing we'll mention today are different types of research that can be used with descriptive research or correlational studies or even experiments and those are longitudinal and cross-sectional studies. If we want to study different populations of people, we might be able to utilize longitudinal studies where we study a group throughout the course of their lifespan. So maybe every three or five years, we check in with the same individuals and see how they've changed as they progress through the lifespan. If we don't have time for that, we might try a cross-sectional study instead. And this is where we take a cross-section of the population. 
So instead of studying the same people as they progress through their life, we can take a group of people right now, some at maybe age five, some at 15, some at 25, and some at 50, and we can compare those groups and see how they're different at different points in their life. That's a faster way of studying people throughout the course of a lifespan, but we're not studying the same people, and so we can't account for individual differences. So these are some of the different types of research that we can do in psychology that help us get a foundation about human behavior and thought processes. Next time, we'll talk about correlational studies and how we can use that to start to predict people's behavior in order to understand the nature of relationships. Thanks for watching, and remember, be kind to your mind.